dear learners welcome to nio studio today we will be discussing about executive and i am dr mansi sharma assistant professor in school of law igno you know very important part of the government is executive we all know that the government has three part one is legislature which makes the law second is executive which implements the law and third is judiciary so if there is any implementation problem if your legal rights are violated if your human rights are violated then you can approach judiciary so it is very clear from the slide that when we discuss about the three organs executive plays a very important role which has the president the prime minister and the council of ministers next is if we read the objectives of the session first is that you have to understand the difference between the nominal and real executive of the union government second is that you will be understanding the functions of the executive you will also appreciate the position of the president of india you will know about the legislative executive and judicial powers and functions of the president you will also appreciate the role of the governor as the executive head of the state and also understand his position powers and functions you know as we have in the union government the president similarly in the state government we have governor so executive head of the state is a governor executive head of the nation is president of india then what is union executive you know union executive of india is composed of the president prime minister and his council of ministers so this is very important you know because we always say that the head of the state is the president but prime minister and council of ministers in democracy play a very important role because every time you know whatever decisions are taken are we considering the views of the council of ministers and the prime minister the executive power is vested in the president of india this power is exercised in his name through offices subordinate to him or his the president stands at the head of the union executive then all the executive actions are formally taken in his name he is also the supreme commander of the defense forces of india as we know that india is a republic so head of the state is elected the constitution of india has laid down a procedure to elect the president when i say india is a republic that means the head of the state is not hereditary you know he will be elected and how he will be elected we will be discussing so first is that the president is elected indirectly by an electoral college which consists of the elected members of both the houses of parliament i e the lok sabha and the rajya sabha and also the elected members of all the 29 state legislatures along with the legislatures of national capital of delhi and union territory of puducherry so this is the composition of people who will be electing the president of india then nominated members of lok sabha rajya sabha and vidhan sabhas are not entitled to vote for the election of the president then there are certain qualifications which have been mentioned as to who can qualify to become a president and this is mentioned that he should be a citizen of india he should have completed the age of 35 years he should not hold any office of profit under the union government or any state government however the office of the president the vice president the governor and the ministers of union or state is not considered as an office of profit and this is very important you know these are the people who take major decisions these are the people who appoint heads of major divisions and their office cannot be considered as an office of profit next is that the president election is held in accordance with the system of proportional representation by means of single transferable vote and the voting is done by secret ballot so it is not direct election it is informal election wherein you know everybody 
puts a vote and then it is decided that who becomes the president of India. Then, you know, a winning candidate must score more than 50% of the total valid votes polled. The amount is vote, the amount of votes is called electoral quota. And this is also very important, you know. Valid votes, out of the total valid votes, 50% and more than 50% should have been polled in his favor. Then only he will become president of India. So it is a tough procedure, you know. Then the president shall hold the office for a term of five years. Then a person who holds or has held office as president shall subject to other provisions of the constitution be also eligible for re-election to the office. So it is that once he completes his term, he is also eligible for another term. But again, the process will follow and again he has to file and then he will be elected. Next, we will be discussing about how can a president be removed and this is called impeachment process. You know, the process of removal of the president is termed as impeachment process. The resolution to impeach can be moved in any one of the two houses of parliament. This resolution should be moved by at least one-fourth of the total members of the House and must be passed by not less than two-third majority of total members of the House. So this is very important, you know, we have not seen that, you know, this is such an important position when you have a president, you have so many roles and responsibility. So impeachment is a process, but it is a very difficult process to follow. Then we have said that after being passed in one of houses, the resolution goes to the second house for investigation. The charges in levied against the president are investigated by the second house. President may defend him, her personally or through his counsel. This is also very important. You know, if in one house you cannot say that by two third majority it is passed, it also goes to the second house and in the second house the president gets an opportunity to defend himself either himself by or by his counsel. Then it is very important that if the second house also accepts the resolution by not less than two third majority of the house then the impeachment process succeeds and the president stands removed from his or office on the date when it is passed in the second house. Such a resolution has to be passed by both the houses. So when it is passed in the second house, then only, you know, this date will be his removal date. But as I just said that this is a very technical process and it takes time. Then if there is a vacancy in the office of the president, Vacancy in the office of the president may be caused either due to the death of or resignation or impeachment. So either, you know, in the case of death, there can be a vacancy. In the case of resignation, there can be a vacancy. In the case of death, there can be a vacancy. So in this situation, the vice president of India automatically officiates the president. An election of the president is to be held within six months of this vacancy and the vice president cannot officiate for more than six months. You know, so this is something which is very important that we have a president who has a lot of roles and responsibility. So if the office is vacated, then within six months, election should be done. Then it is also said the president may resign by tendering his or her Resignation which is addressed to the vice president. Resignation of the president is communicated by the vice president to the speaker of the Lok Sabha. So here is the importance of the speaker of the Lok Sabha. So the president will inform and give resignation to the vice president and the vice president will communicate this to the speaker of the Lok Sabha. So this is the procedure, you know, you have very strict procedures which we follow in case of president. Then 
you can always say that it is not something you know which is just decided by you know maybe the Lok Sabha or the Raj Sabha or the few members of the Lok Sabha or the Raj Sabha. It should be placed and approved by two third majority of both the houses and the president gets time to defend his case. So this is a very important phenomena. We say that president is the head of the state. So his appointment and his removal has a procedure. And in India, we say that we have procedures for all the things and implementation is proper. So once a president is elected, he looks after the benefit of the country and he represents the country. He can be re-elected and this is something which is not, you know, hereditary. As in other countries, we see that the head of the state is hereditary. But India is a republic country, India is a democratic country. So we the people of India indirectly choose our president and then he looks after the interest of the country. Thank you.